So this is uh, the way, uh, this is the path we are using to, uh, for our research. This is my main research line. Everyone knows, a crystallographer. Uh, so from crystallographer, we have the crystal structures. After we have a lot of crystal structures, and that's the way chemists think. We have a lot of information, uh, so we are doing data mining, that is trying to give to understand uh, what is the reason for all this crystal structure to be formed. And from this data mining, trying to guess what kind of node covalent interactions we may expect if we want to predict a uh, crystal structure. So, between different kind of non-covalent interactions, I will just focus on what we are interested in, a pi system, that is two different kinds. And now, it things start on taking different ways. Because when we think about pi systems, normally aromatic rings, all kind of aromatic rings, doesn't matter the number of atoms or the kind of atoms, and we'll see that. But also chelate rings, with a, where one of the atoms is um, a metal, oh, all these inorganic people know it very well, they also have pi, pi clouds, that is, they have delocalized, delocalized electrons all around this uh, compound. So, this was this is a very fantastic review about this kind of uh, what is called metalloaromaticity. aromaticity okay so this is the search protocols we have used that's not important but started we started in with tellurium and then uh, selenium uh, lead arsenic uh, and sel selenium tin tin, lead, arsenic, and selenium. This is, this is interesting because this is element lone pair pi aryl, aryl, and we'll see that there are all other types of interactions of this kind. So then from tellurium we, we have already seen just a couple of minutes ago how it started its, and so this is the developing line. In tin chemistry, that was the so important that uh, the is a part is a chapter of this book uh, on frontiers and uh, application on tin chemistry. And so we have uh, a chapter there, just showing that. And that is the, the title is an a fact or an artifact. So we are we show there that it's not an artifact; it's a fact due to the due to the fact that there is no other kind of interaction in this kind of crystals. So, uh, and here we have some examples of that uh, uh, of that chapter. There. So we have ionic complexes. We have the tin is charged, we have zigzag chains, we have what we call zero D arrangements, because they it's, it's uh, only this kind of arrangement, molecule to molecule, different kinds of, uh, of compounds, we can see. Uh, of course, if, if someone is interested in, in that book, you'll have a couple of uh, 40 or, fi uh, or 50 different structures and different kind of uh, arrangement. So in the middle of that, we were invited. There was a special number of the uh, Australian Journal of Chemistry on research uh, in the frontiers. So we decided to look in on lead by IRL interactions. And again, we uh, show there 
uh, one important thing. The, in the only crystal we found lead RL interactions is where we have lead 2. It's the only case we found that. And that is experimental. We don't have really now an answer why it is going, but we found that. And it's more important that it's not so rare because we have around 3% of all the structures in the, in the data bank that have this kind of interaction as the only interaction that can be uh, shown to uh, to build up the crystal. So we have all these very nice uh, interactions. Here we have some different uh, arrangements, even this kind is which is not very common, not even the this 3D arrangement of molecules is not even common in structures where uh, hydrogen bonds are involved or other, ca other kind of uh, interactions. Three dimensional normally are, as I've shown, zero dimensional, that is one molecule with one molecule, sometimes one dimensional, that is uh, a, a change, very, very seldom uh, two dimensional and in some cases uh, a 3D is only one that is to show that it may be, it may exist. And this kind of thing is very, very uh, interesting because it's not very common. There are only a few examples uh, in all the structures we have seen, not only lead, but in lead is the only example, but there are one or two examples in tellurium, one or one, ex uh, I think I showed that one example in selenium and so on, because it's uh, difficult to the R ring to accept two negative charge in the pocket. But we are, we are going to see that there is a very special case in this kind of this kind of interaction that was absolutely uh, unexpected, which is this arsenic lone pair. So I don't know if you can see here. This is uh, uh, to people that understand the English. So uh, that means when arsenic meet pi. Uh, is because, and this is referred to that is when arsenic meets pi. When the arsenic it's going closer to the pi aryl, but we had to make something more funny. So. This is a meat pie. This is uh, a pie, very, very popular in Australia, that is sold like our coxinhas and things like that. Huh? It is a meat pie, so uh, arsenic with a meat pie. So it's when arsenic meat meets pie, and this is uh, the, the reason uh, for uh, this unexpected. You can see we have made. Uh, calculations on the electronic density of this compound and it is it can be shown that there is the lone pair of the arsenic there are two arsenics one in top and one in the bottom of the uh, pi ring and that was really very very interesting because that makes things to change absolutely well, the idea of what we have to look when we are trying to guess if some kind of molecule or group of molecules is going to uh, crystallize. Of course, there are. This is the the trichloride ar arsenic. Yeah, and there are of course other kinds of uh, zero D and one D. Yes. And then we go to another point of the story. And the story is now here it changed a little bit because here it's pi gold interactions. And, and it's not a mistake. It's not that I change the words. It's different. Here we have 
just a donation of electronic density to something that is electronic deficient. Be before that, we have two uh, different entities that had that had electronic uh, density more or less the same. Not exactly, if not, there was not kind of in no interaction between them. But in this case, what we have is a donation of electronic density from the phenyl ring or the iron ring to the uh, metal, to the gold. So that was another thing. We never expect that to have it. Uh, even when we search the literature on that, there was uh, uh, a paper saying that they saw an iron ring very close to the gold. Uh, but they thought, and they wrote that, that was a mistake due to the poor quality of the crystals. And it was not that. It was really, they, they didn't want to take the chance uh, with the referee to say, come on, do it again. So, or that's wrong in, in some way or we'll explain it. So if, you, if the sample is not good, that's enough to uh, publish the... So this is some other examples of uh, the gold pi interaction. It's not so... Uh, yeah, again, they are not so rare and they are absolutely neglected in the literature. So from uh, a year or something ago, uh, they start on looking to that and uh, I've seen a recent paper saying we looked for gold pi interactions and there is no one in our crystal. So on that, well, doesn't, doesn't matter very much if, if there is no, but they wrote that. And uh, so then we start on thinking on given uh, another uh, step in, uh, in our research. What if we change one of the carbon atoms of the phenyl ring for a nitrogen or two nitrogens or three tri so we start on looking uh, on metal lone pair pi interactions or uh, because the first one we've done is with gold that's the reason uh, we should yeah i should wrote it in the other way around, but it, uh, it's easy to understand. So what would we expect with that? We discussed that beforehand. We can find new things or no?